you fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, bristle nose pleco baby newborns. Let's learn how to care for them. Grab yourself a healthy snack and a beverage. I've got my coldest water cup here with ice cold water in it. Stand by. <laughs> Alright fishy folks, if you want your own coldest water cup, you can click the link below and make a few shuckles. You get a fantastic cup, perhaps a Mother's Day gift, perhaps a gift for yourself. Great deal, check it out. Today we're going to be talking about Bristle Nose Pleco Babies. Why? I just had babies. That's why. So here's the thing with Bristle Nose Plecos. They're pretty easy to breed. Uh, all the species are easy, not species, but all the morphs are easy. There are some specific morphs that are more difficult. I find the long fins are a little bit more difficult, the super reds are a little bit more difficult, and the blue eyes are a little bit more difficult. But the standard browns, the albinos, all short fins, uh, the calicos, pretty easy, simple to breed. Basically you need a male and a female, some really good food and places for them to do it. That's right, folks, they gotta do it in order to have babies. <clears throat> I've done videos on how to breed and breeding basics and breeding tips and tricks and whatever you wanna call it. I'll put links uh, down below for all my Bristle Nose Pleco breeding videos. I'll put a link up here for the best one. But today, specifically, I wanna talk about raising the Bristle Nose Pleco fry. So as you can see, these fry are really small. They just came out of the cave today. In fact, they weren't out of the cave this morning uh, when I checked my fish room, and they are out this evening when I checked the fish room. So uh, these particular plecos are about four to six days old. Typically, they'll uh, hatch in the cave. The father will protect them from any predators when they're in the cave. They'll eat off their egg sac. Once they're done with their egg sac, they'll sort of venture out. Now, in my tanks, there are really no predators for plecos, so I don't really need to worry about anybody eating them. Uh, I do breed plecos on the bottom, guppies mid-range and top in most of my tanks. Double the money, double the fun. Now, what you're gonna wanna focus on after they come out of their cave is good, high-quality food. Now, you can always go with the standard French-cut green beans, and they have to be French-cut because as you know, plecos are fancy. They don't like the regular cut. They have to be French cut. No, seriously. The French cut be green beans means they're cut down the center. So the inside is out in the open and that's what they like to eat. I find that regular green beans they won't eat as, as easily as the French cut. Now I go through, once I open a can, I go through in one day. Uh, I, I put the whole can in all my tanks that have plecos and it's gone. If you need to take that can and spread it out over a couple of days, you can certainly put the can in the refrigerator for five to seven days, or you can freeze it in little baggies or little uh, ice cube trays, and then you can defrost it, put it in frozen, it's fine. As far as commercial food, the best in my opinion, Dr. Basilier's. I love the Dr. Basilier's chlorella and green, which is not focusing, there we go, green chlorella, and they make something called better tabs, which are like, they're like this big. Uh, I'm out of them. I feed the heck out of them because they're so good. The plecos love them and they do really well on them. There are other Dr. Brand formulas that you can certainly feed your plecos. Uh, almost all of them are really good. Right here I have garlic and pumpkin that I also feed them sometimes as well. Now, as far as other foods that are good, uh, I also really like the kelp wafers from Northfin. Uh, there are some other good foods out there, foods I'd stay away from. The Hikari algae wafers, in my opinion, not so good. The California black worm algae wafers don't sink. I did a video on it, they didn't sink, got into an argument with the owner, put that link up here. Now, that's it. I would put food in every day and let them eat it. If your plecos are someplace where there's a lot of light and you have babies, sometimes they'll be a little skittish, so you may want to put the food in at night because most of the times, plecos are nocturnal. Now, all my bristlenoles are out during the day because there's a lot of light in here when I'm around and they're always out and I always feed them in the light. And I do that on purpose so that when I sell the plecos on my website, michaelsfishroom.com, they're not too skittish and they don't hide. 
Uh, as far as water changes and everything else, I would keep everything the same. I wouldn't do excess water changes. I wouldn't do anything with the temperature. I wouldn't change filtration or anything with bristlenose plecos. Babies, they're pretty hardy as far as uh, fry go. They also grow rather quickly if you feed them well. And that's, that's the key. You gotta feed them well for them to grow quickly. If you don't want them to grow quickly or grow very much at all, just feed them sparingly. But I wouldn't do that. I would feed them <coughs> quickly. Folks, here's a tip for you. If you overfeed because you're trying to get your pleco babies fat and healthy to sell at the local fish club, if you have any snails in your tank, your snail population will increase because there's more food. One of the biggest questions I see on Facebook is, how do I get rid of excess snails? Stop overfeeding. I don't overfeed. Yes, you do. The only way your snails are gonna grow is if you overfeed. All right, sorry, tangent, I know, I'm sorry. Back to the plecos. Feed them. I wouldn't do anything different with water changes or temperature or filtration, just feed them. The only thing you really need to be careful is if you do a weekly gravel vac or a bi-weekly gravel vac, whatever you do in your maintenance, just be careful not to suck them up. You may want to suck them into a bucket if that's what you do and then double check the bucket after the mulm settles. Speaking of mulm, I find the Pleco's babies do way better if there's mulm in the tank. What is mulm? Well, I have a video on it. I'll put a link up here for you. But mulm is essentially uneaten food, um, waste in the tank that just kind of settles at the bottom and the Pleco's babies especially will go inside and hide and they'll also eat little microorganisms off it, which help them stay healthy and grow. So really, bristlenose pleco babies, quite easy. That's it. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you're interested in buying plecos to set up your own breeding uh, setup or breeding for profit, certainly take a look at my website, michaelsfishroom.com. We have many varieties of bristlenose plecos for sale. Guys, have yourself a great day. And don't forget to check out my friends at the coldest water. See ya. Now, here's a tip and a trick, folks. If you overfeed plecos, you will increase your snail infestation. If you have infestation, is that a word? Now, here's a tip. Here's a, I don't know. Hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, let's talk about pleco babies, specifically bristlenose pleco babies. They're so cute and adorable. Grab yourself a healthy snack and a beverage. I need my coldest water cup. Stand by. All right, fishy folks. I have my coldest water bottle. As you know, they are a sponsor of the channel. It does keep the coldest darn water, I tell you that. They sent me this nice white one. I gave the green one to Lucas, my 10 year old. My snack today is a Japanese cookie. If it would focus. These are the best cookies. If you ever go to Japan, you can buy them in the airport. Fantastic. Also, look how smart they are. They have this little cutout, which it's not focusing. There we go. See that little cutout right there? That makes it easy. Boom, you open it up. The cookie comes out. White chocolate. Now, today, Pleco Babies. Probably shouldn't have filmed that. It's going to be a blooper. Fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, let's talk about bristlenose pleco babies, how to raise them, how to breed bristlenose plecos, and how to care for them. Grab yourself a healthy snack and a beverage. I'm drinking water out of my ice cold. No, it's not ice cold. That's dumb. Hiya, fishy folks, and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. Today, let's talk about bristlenose pleco babies. How care for newborns. Grab yourself a healthy snack and a beverage. I got my coldest water cup. Loving this coldest water cup. 32 ounces. Keep stuff ice cold. No beverage. I mean, no. Fuck. I like the Dr. Basilier's green. Uh, also, god damn it. I like the Dr. Do Doc, 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 doctor, 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 doctor. My glasses are dirty. That's what it is. The glasses being dirty are what's throwing me off. 
idiot. Now one lens is clean. I only clean one lens because I'm a dope. Stand by, folks. I should just leave this in the video. That would be hysterical.